Hey guys, it's Ivan from Overlandy. Um, welcome. And today we're doing a review uh, on the long term test of our SeaTech charging system in our Land Rover Discovery 3. Um, we're utilising the D250SA and the 120 Smart Pass. Um, it's called the Off Grid System. And we're going to talk you through what we've been doing with this and how it's been. Uh, coping in our vehicle. So we installed the D250 and Smart Pass into the car and I have to say to anybody who's looking at this and the techie guys will understand this very very quickly one of the key points is the installation. Um, follow the instructions from SeaTech do not install them under the bonnet and I'll come back to that in a moment and run really good cabling from the front of the car to the back. We are using 50 mil cable to a distribution point underneath here and um, from there we then split to a 25 mil cable up to here and through the appropriate 300 amp fusing. Um, again the techie guys will understand this front to rear voltage drops 0.01. Bloody brilliant it really is. Um, and it makes a difference because it means the voltages at the back here and the D250SA and the Smart Pass are getting really good voltages and the continuity on the cabling is um, almost you know, it's negligible, it's nothing, it's almost nothing, there's no problem there. Um, all of the joints are soldered and heat shielded and so I will say to anybody that's looking at this and anybody that's looking to do it, make sure you get a really good installation done and that all the joints in my view should be soldered and heat shielded some will say different but uh, for us it works and this vehicle has been through a lot in the last year and we've had no problems with the joints having soldered everything so let's get down to it the D250 and the smart pass is hooked up to our 140 amp alternator and that in turn is charging a 140 amp per hour uh, AGM battery from Discoverer, um, which is supplied here in South Africa by Anatech. Um, I have to say, an amazing battery and really does absorb power very, very quickly utilizing the CTEC system. Um, we've done tests and the AGM was dropped down to around about 20%, which is around about 11.7, 11.8 11 volts. And we ran the car, we drove, we went to a lo next location, and one and three quarter hours, one and a half, one and three quarter hours, that battery was fully topped up, right the way up, ready for the next night and the next part of the adventure of what Avalandi have been doing. Um, obviously, it's wired utilizing the CTEC. D250SA um, cabling to ensure that the AGM gets charged at the appropriate 14.7 volts when necessary and the multi-stage charging system from the uh, D250SA is frankly incredible. You can see it as you're driving along what the vehicle's doing. We've got a monitor in the front and I'll take you a few photo photos of that and you'll see that. Um, I've got various time lapses on that and guys will be able to see that out if they want. Um, but you can actually see the vehicle systems working in the car. You can see the C-Tech getting into the battery and charging it up as quick as it possibly can. And for the user that's in an overland situation, that is important. Because unless you've got those batteries back up, you're going to have a problem, a really big problem. Um, some of the charging systems that are out there won't give you the 14.7 uh, volts needed for AGM or even the 14.4 volts for deep cycle batteries. I'll talk about batteries in another um, review some other time. Um, but we use the AGM and it's been brilliant for us. Now the cool thing about the SeaTech is you know you start up, you drive away and you get on with your life and, and that battery is just it just deals with it. It doesn't muck about, it just gets on with it, and you don't have to worry about it. it. It just does it for you. And that's that's really key because 
you know, you're overlanding or you're doing your daily thing, you haven't really got time to keep thinking about is it charging, isn't it charging, it just does it. And, you know, it's almost plug and play and leave it, you know, and, and, and get on with your life. And it's, it's, it's that good. Now, before we settled with the CTEC system, we did test pretty much every other um, DC to DC charging system out there. And um, in the end, uh, I decided that the CTEC was best for us. There are other systems out there. Some would say comparable, some would say not. I don't think they are comparable. That's my personal opinion. Um, but I did test all the major brand um, charging systems. So, why CTEC? Well, it works. It doesn't go wrong. And the great bit for me is you've got various aspects of that D250A. So let's just talk about the D250SA. It will charge pretty much any battery out there utilizing the alternator or power fed to it, whether it be a charging system, AC to DC charging system onto the primary battery. Um, it will then take power and keep your other batteries topped up, your service batteries topped up. So that's a really important factor for me. Secondly, it will charge those batteries up to the correct level. You put the black wire from the D250SA down onto the AGM, onto the negative, it knows it's an AGM there, it ups the voltage, happy days, you know. It's going to get into it and get it charged up. Um, and it's going to poke up the voltage to about 14.7 volts when necessary. Um, so for that it's great, it's absolutely brilliant. The other added advantage is it, it also has an MPPT charging system built in for it for solar power which means you can potentially charge 20 amps of power from solar through the MPPT in the D250SA and get your batteries topped up, again using solar power. Um, so you can chuck it up to probably around about a 300 amp solar panel on there and a lot of guys are now starting to use bigger solar panels of that size when they're off grid, overlanding and such like because, you know, let's be fair, we are chucking more and more and more stuff in our vehicles and those batteries are getting hammered overnight whether you're running fridges ice machines wife's hair tongs through a um, inverter or whether you've got the kids iPads or whatever plugged in that service battery is getting hammered and if you're only sucking five amps an hour overnight you know let's say you've got 12 14 hours you know you do the math it's 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 a lot of power you're sucking and you've got to get it back in as quick as you can. Now if you're off grid and you're not driving somewhere the next day, you've still got power being drawn the next day, so you need a big solar panel. Solar panels we'll talk about in detail in another review, but the fact is that D250SA will give you that as well. So you haven't got to go and buy a solar controller. You've got it built in and it works really, really well. Let's talk about the Smart Pass. Man, what a bit of kit what a bit of kit you know it will absorb as much power as it possibly can from the alternator um, based upon what the vehicle's doing so if the vehicle's taking up power to keep the systems running it will take the reserve power um, available from the alternator and get it into the battery what I love about it what I really love about it is it does it in two ways it will it seems to supply a voltage to the service battery that's at one set of voltage and out of the auxiliary point here, or out of this service point here, what it will actually then do is supply a separate feed to your ancillaries within the vehicle. So your fridge, your I don't know, your, your I don't know, maybe you've got your walkie-talkie in the back or your VHF or whatever, you know, walk, your handheld, whatever you've got plugged in off of that. And we and on me, we take everything off of here. Everything comes off here. So this is isolation and I get all my draw from the service battery from here. So what the smart pass seems to do is it supplies power down there to charge it up and then it supplies a different feed going this way. And I love that because it means my, my service items are all at a stable voltage all the time. And that's brilliant. So then the smart pass can get into stop, stop, stopping up that service battery as quick as it possibly can and supply the systems to the vehicle. When you're not running, um, you'll see over here we've got a little light here 
it means here it's now feeding from battery down from here into here and supplying this thing here and then you're, you're able to run your utilities now that's cool equally what I love about it is it helps keep your primary battery up and every now and again when it's all switched off you'll see the little light at the bottom here pulse and it's chucking a little bit of power so it's just helping hold the primary battery or your starter battery at a particular level and that's great until it gets itself to a level whereby it cannot do that anymore so it helps keep your service battery or your starter battery at a particularly good level when you're running the green light comes on at the top and that means you're actually getting power um, from the front to the rear I love it I really love it it is frankly brilliant what I also love about the facility of it is is that if your starter battery is flat for whatever reason the smart pass will engage immediately and give you power from your service battery bank to start up your primary battery well everyone will say well that's the same what a solenoid does well yeah it does it's great and you know it will give a certain amount of power for X number of seconds, a certain amount of power for Y number of seconds, and so on and so on. But it does give you the chance to start your battery up, and, or you start your car up, sorry. And that's really great. Um, does it work? Yeah, it works. It works brilliantly. Absolutely brilliant. And absolute credit to CTEC, the way they've designed this and the way they've got it going. And, you know, it's in a really tidy structure. The stuff is durable, it is, it works, you know, make no bones, it works, it does not go wrong. I have not had one failure with this system in any way, shape or form. And the other cool thing now is because of the monitoring system that's in the front, I can drive along and I can tell what the state of charge of my batteries are at any given time, whether they're charging, discharging, how much they're charging at, how much they're discharging at. And from my 140 amp alternator, um, I've sometimes seen just over 100 amps being taken from the alternator to charge up these batteries. Just over 100 amps. You know, we've recently done a test where we've got now a 320 amp alternator, and I've actually now seen that the system is now drawing up to, at times, around about 140 amps from the system to charge up the uh, service batteries how we've done that, how we're getting that with the alternator and such like, again I'll do it in another review. But, the simple fact is, does the CTEC system work? Yes it does. Is it reliable? Yes it is. Does it go wrong? No. You've got warranty, you've got brilliant product, you've got standards that are absolutely impeccable, but make sure you do one thing, get the installation right. Because if you get that installation right, it will work. And then you've got the chance making sure your batteries are topped up for when you really need them and that's imperative let's be fair we're off the grid it's imperative we've got to have service batteries topped up as long as possible yet yeah, some will say well I can get that with my, my solenoid system well yeah you can yeah you can but you know here's the thing solenoid system is not going to charge your service battery up to the level you need to you might get it up to 80 percent might you've got a 100 amp per hour battery do the math you can only take that deep cycle 100 amp hour battery battery down to 50 percent so if you've only got it to 80 80 amps 80 percent then you've really got 30 amps to play with for the night now, if you're drawing five amps for 12 hours do the math you know you're not going to be there so again battery service bank is imperative do the calculations do the math and again i can talk about that in another review and i'm more than happy to do so look guys I'm getting phone calls and I'm getting messages from people all around the world asking, oh, look, you know, you're out, on the, you're off the grid a lot. You know, how does it work? How do you do it and survive and you don't have problems with your batteries? I don't have problems with batteries because my installation's good, and also I'm using damn good equipment. And you know, I do get, a, I feel a lot of phone calls and a lot of emails and a lot of messages from guys about this. And and you know, you, you see guys coming on to me and they're saying, guys, you know, I've got this CTEC system and it's not working. I say, okay, well, where do you install it? Well, it's under the bonnet. Hmm, okay. Go check the temperatures under your bonnet. When you're out in the bush and it's 40, 45 degrees outside, see that is, you know, you're going to see temperatures under your bonnet of 70 or even 80 degrees centigrade. Electronic components don't like that heat and they don't want to work there. And that's why CTEC say, do not put it under the bonnet. Put it somewhere like we've got it's cooler, you've got the aircon going in the car, 
or it's a lot cooler in the back of your car, in the back of your bucky, or you, or whatever it is you're using, and you're giving the system chance to work at a temperature range that's really good. So that's key, where you install it, how you install it. Um, is it worth its money? Yes it is, some will say it's an expensive item. Yeah, maybe it is a little bit expensive compared to one or two other bits and pieces, but don't forget, just with that D250SA, you're getting an MPPT charger in there, and you're getting a really good five stage um, charging system. You know, some of them don't do that. Some do, some don't. The added advantage of the Smart Pass is obviously you can put a lot more power and current towards your charging and therefore charge up a lot quicker. And you've got the advantage of it splits and gives you power back to the uh, starter battery if you need it. My advice to anybody, look at your application. Look what it is you're going to be using it for. If you're going to be off grid for several days and you're not getting a, an AC-DC um, power source, then you've obviously got to run on solar. You've got that built in. So you're saving yourself money utilizing the CTEC system. So you're not buying a DC to DC charger and then you've got to go and buy a really good MPPT um, system on top. If you do the math and you add them together, you're actually pretty much comparable or you end up paying more than you would for a D250 SA. If you hunt around and try and find yourself a 20 amp MPPT charging system, they're not cheap. You know, a really good one is not cheap. Um, but you've got that built in there and it works and it knows whether the engine's running or whether you're actually taking off the solar and it switches accordingly between it. Um, so my advice for me, for our application, it's good, it works, it doesn't go wrong and we're happy. Um, guys, like the video if you like it, subscribe, you know, I'm going to do more videos as time goes on here and um, if you've got questions, please feel free to question me, you know, and come across and say, what do you think about this, or what do you think about that? I'll answer it if I can. If I haven't got answers for you, I'll find them. I'll find you the answers you want, and we'll get back to you. And if you want more details, please, please, feel free to email us. Check me out on our website. You'll see the details. You can get hold of me, and I'll give you every piece of information I can on it, and why, and whatever. Um, hope you like the video. Um, feedback is always great, and um, thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day.